Hey everyone, let's take a look at this counterfeit coin. Hey everyone, Silver Steeler here. And winning image photography. And we're with Kurt Plowman from Dragon's Horde and we're taking a look at this counterfeit ca capped bust. I knew yeah. I was never going to say that, right? <laughs> a lot of people, it's one of those uh, word yeah. word triples, Tone makes twister. you trip over it, yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. Counterfeit capped bust coin, say yeah. that three times fast. <laughs> right? So, uh, we were taking a look at this down in Tennessee from a friend of mine, Steve Rice, and uh, we thought it was real until we started checking out a few things about it, and the first alert was that it had a reeded edge. Completely reeded edge. Yeah, yes. completely reeded edge. And we thought we'd uh, let our LCS guy heard here break it down for us so take it away other than the read it edge it's yeah. totally read it edge there's other things that yep there's a lot of things that these coins apparently or not apparently but uh that, that we find as we're going through time and and i'll point out a few things as we go but uh I, I and for your for the viewers i definitely want people to pay close attention there are a lot of contemporary counterfeits out there that were done early in the you know 50s 60s 70s that were really high quality a lot of them were made out of solid metals you know still 90 percent silver correct composites some of them are even actually better we had a a uh, uh a 24 karat gold coin come in the the door the other day that should have been uh, and now it wasn't a u.s coin but it should have only been 90 percent gold uh, ten percent copper, and it was actually twenty four karat gold coin where a jeweler had made a copy so you will find these and then also as you 're surfing the internet you 'll find companies out there and i don 't want to call out anybody to claim they 're doing anything wrong necessarily because most of them will tell you that they 're a counterfeit, a reproduction, or a copy but um, there are earlier ones like this that were actually intended to you know cheat you or copy you mm -hmm. or to fake you and then there are the ones out there nowadays that are available for a couple of dollars on uh, websites from all over the world uh, that you can find you know, at Wish and Alibaba and places like that that are li quite literally they are duplicates copies reproductions you'll notice I didn't say they were a counterfeit coin because they weren't intended to cheat you they actually usually say somewhere on there copy reproduction or something right. like that it's stamped it's usually very small but if you look closely with a good jeweler's loop you should be able to see those and I can show you an example of that if you'd like to a neat thing about um, US coinage of course in the United States is we have a really great record of what should be there it's very very rare or uncommon that we come up with something that doesn't have a record of well-known examples of the coin that we can compare it to and there's lots of reference materials like the Whitman Red Guide Red Book and uh, the Collector's Guide to Rare Coins and things like that that will help you to become an expert yourself uh, on on any type coin that you're looking at but for today we're going to look at an 1808 capped bust uh, it's it's actually a really beautiful coin, a great example of early numismatic coinage, you know, great pattern. But uh, we're going to look at a couple of things here. So as you're taking a look at the coin right now, you can see this is the uh, obverse of the coin, and we'll flip it over and let you see the reverse of the coin. And we're going to go through both sides and show you what we, you know, uh, what draws attention to us, uh, uh, to what stands out. Uh, you know, me and my multiple personalities, I'm, I'm never alone. <laughs> But uh, a couple of things. First of all, there were examples of the capped bust and drape bust that did have completely reeded edges, just not in 1808. So this is important. The early or contemporary counterfeits that happen out there um, that were intended to fool people, a lot of times these were the little mistakes they made that you have to know to look for. So, for example, this coin, and, and please forgive my fingers, guys, but this is a counterfeit, so we're not going to damage any numismatic value here. This coin is completely readed all the way around. There is no location for a legend whatsoever, which of course would not necessarily be a problem if the date were the right date, if this were a different date, that the example should be um, a completely readed edge. This one uh, should have had a legend on there, and uh, I'm gonna use a piece of paper, but uh, and we'll show you a picture here in just a moment. But uh, on this particular coin, there were a couple of patterns that were done that contained a legend. And the legend had either lines, words, and lines, or it had reeded edge, X's, words, and X's. Neither of those patterns are present on the edge of this coin. I'm going to pull over a photo real quick just so you guys can see what we're talking about here. So in this particular year, um, and if we look on examples here, the 1809 shows the experimental edge, where you can see the words 50 
and then we have right along in here the X's or stars <clears throat> and then in this 1809 experimental edge you can see we have the wording and then it went back into reading and this isn't a very good picture of the reading but this is the red book example they used to show people the two different examples of what you should have seen there um, and those were for the remodeled portrait edge from 1809 this is an 1808 pattern copy okay and if we look at a couple of things we're going to compare the stars on the front of the coin here I'll slide this up so you guys can see if we look um, Let's look first at our example here in the photo. We have a large star example here. So this copy was made from a large star example. If you look at the stars, there are what we call delineations, those little lines that are in between each piece of the star as it goes together in a uh, 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 example of this coin. This is actually the low part of the coin, so that should be visible unless the coin is extremely heavily worn. You should see those little lines where the star comes together in a large star example. Okay. Now again, this is an 1807 example that we're looking at in the picture with large stars, but the large star example, which is what they've copied here, so we'll take a look at our coin again. You'll notice that these are very what I call soft stars, so they're the large star pattern, but there's no line delineations in here. This is usually a sign that this might be a reproduction, okay, or uh, a counterfeit. The next thing that I look at when I'm looking at a coin like this is we want to look very closely at all the other details of the coin and see how much wear is on it. And we notice that she's still got almost all of her details. She's got a nice real clean curl down here at the bottom of her hair. You have almost all the details around her eye here, as you can see. So this example of the coin in the areas that should be very, very heavily worn if this was going to be worn smooth are not. So that shows that the high points of this coin that were struck were struck soft. They were not as detailed as a United States currency coin would have been when it left. Now, that's not enough by itself. Let's say, let's just question maybe it was a bad day at the Mint and the guys weren't working as hard on the presses and they just didn't get it quite pressed hard enough. Okay, let's overlook that. Let's flip this little puppy over. <clears throat> now, we'll look at the back of this one. This is where I really want you to get uh, kind of suspicious is the word I would use. As soon as I saw this back bells and whistles and gigantic screaming red arrows started pointing out in my eyeballs. So things you look for, um, if you'll recall, United States fields are usually very clean. The fields area of the coin, that's the smooth recessed area in the back where there is no detail or art that allows the coin to stand out and the pattern to show nice and detailed. This should be smooth and if you looked back at our obverse, it is smooth on our obverse. This is more what you should see. But when we go back to the reverse, we start to see some telltale, telltale signs of sand casting. You see all these tiny little pock marks? If you're familiar with casting silver, which I'm sure being silver stackers you probably are, when you cast in something like delft sand or wet sand casting, which is a very, very commonly used tactic for reproducing a piece over and over again, you uh, press the original into wet sand and using pressure or a tool you um, impress the coin into the wet sand then you place another mold over the top and you place more sand on it and then you press that down again some people use a, a numismatic or a pneuma pneumatic press or uh, I've even seen guys that have uh, um, um, uh, tamping machines that will tamp down the, the delft sand really fine and detailed in there but obviously this one wasn't done that way it was hand done and you can see where the wet clumps of sand were not pressed as detailed or as deeply as they should have been which leaves signs to show that this is actually you know a, a cast example another thing we're looking at here is that we look at the details on the high points of the coin are again extremely good I mean super good. If you look at the details right down to the cleft between where the claw in, enters into the rest of the talon where the feathers are, you can see feather delineation, you can see feather points all the way down to the tips. Um, you see all this really high great detail on this coin and then you look at things like the berries. Well these berries should have been rounded. Okay, So if we look at other examples of this coin, you'll notice that these berries here should be highly mounted in a coin with this much detail and in not they're actually pressed flat so let's come back over here and look at another example of the rounded berries you'll notice in this photograph here this has nicely rounded berries see how they kind of point up and they're shiny where the the, the the high point of the berry has kind of been rubbed or brushed off you'll notice that that's nice and brushed um, and it's high and it's round you'll notice in our copy here that these are flattened and elongated that's usually a sign of a sloppy copy 
You know, it's a, it's a copy where they just didn't pay close enough detail, uh, eye detail to those little things you're looking at. Um, this coin has very, very, very little wear on it. Um, obviously, it's a really good counterfeit. Other things that, that concern me when we did check its weight um, is that we found out that it was just a tiny bit underweight. Instead of 13.48, it was 13.38. So, you know, that little bitty difference um, was enough to convince me that between all the discrepancies we see on the coin, um, the things that aren't there that should be and the things that shouldn't be there are, it, it definitely tells me that this is one that I would feel very confident in claiming if we send it and it would come back graded as being, uh, being a copy. Now, I would say that it's probably a silver copy because it feels like silver. It has the right ring when you do the, the coin ring to it. But um, remember, a lot of those contemporary counterfeits, silver back then was really not expensive. And mm, right. when you're talking about a coin that could be in this condition $220, $250, you know, that's one reason why they copied them was because the silver value would have only been a couple of dollars, you know, back then. Uh, actually, it would have been like 80 cents or 90 cents back then. Uh, and then time and energy, which, you know, most good craftsmen have an abundance of time and energy. So they're investing that to make a, a very expensive coin. Um, which you know, that would be. I mean, it would be, what, yeah. If that, if that thing was like real, what would the value on that be? Um, 250 to $500 on the yeah. low end. It could be more than that um, on the other end. So we've got all kinds of stuff that, that, that calls out to us that it is not an original. So, But when you're looking at these, and, and I promise to show you guys a copy. Let me grab this real quick. I'm going to zoom back in here. I'm going to show you something on this other copy coin for the viewers that will see that. Um, we want to show you on the newer contemporary copies, again, you can see these sand castings and things like that you can see where they've done some weird polishing so that this is a newer one where they've polished the center and left the outside looking dirty to make the coin look like that mm -hmm. okay and then you can see again where they've made mistakes on the edge i mean you look at all that dirt down inside there you can tell that's been artificially placed there it's like somebody just literally took a thing and swiped it periodically and then wiped some extra off so when you get a, a copy like this guy you know this is a three thousand dollar coin mm -hmm. and obviously it's, it's a replica or a copy but, uh, you know, they've done a really good job of copying lots of details. But once again, you start looking at it closely, you know, the dentals on the arrows, not so good. The details on the leaves, not so good. Really, really, really bad stars. It's the same thing that happens is that these copies, the, de the guys were so tired or so, you know, they'd done so much work on the rest of the coin that one or two little things, one or two little things slip through the cracks. And that leaves you with... Still a really good copy, but a copy. Yeah, a so hopefully this has given you some information to help you out. And uh, remember, use your reference materials or, or go to an LCS if you're ever concerned before you invest a lot of money. Mm -hmm. oh, you can always do the, do the uh, let's get a guaranteed thing. Get it guaranteed before you uh, you buy the coin. You can send it in, get it graded, and then get it to come back. But, right. So there you go. Thank you so much, Kurt. You're welcome, Everyone, guys. it's going to bring this one to a close. Remember to like, subscribe, and all the other good things. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, everyone.